Welcome. In this video, I'd just like to uh, establish a little formula that comes up in a calculus when you're doing Riemann sums for the first time in your life and you're trying to integrate uh, under the curve y equals x cubed. What is the sum of the first n cubed numbers? And a lot of people see the formula n, n plus 1 over 2 all squared. So I'd like to just derive that formula, assuming you're deeply interested in this particular formula as opposed to the other sums of powers. And there's a nice way to use a multiplication table to do this. But before I get there, let me just uh, talk about a general table that's in a square array. And it's well known, for example, as a classic little uh, visual proof here. If I did, a, say, a 4x4 four four array of squares, I claim this is really a picture of the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. I claim that is really 4 squared. And how do I see that? Um, it's great, great delight when you realize this for the first time in your life, but if I look at the diagonals, there's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, as 3 plus 2 plus 1. And there it is. That's all 16 dots accounted for. 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. In fact, in general, 1 plus 2 all the way up to n, and then back down again, plus 2 plus 1, would just be an n by n array dot, so the answer must be n squared which is kind of nice. In fact, I will use this in a moment itself, but actually it leads to, look at 1 plus 2 plus up to n, and I'm missing an n, but I'm going to add an n to both sides. I'll put an n in here, and I'll add another n there to keep it balanced. And I see n down to 1. So it tells me twice times the sum of 1 plus 2 oops, up to n is n squared plus n. So that tells me just the sum of the counting numbers, the first n counting numbers, is actually n squared plus n, each divided by 2. Well, that's kind of neat. All right, to get to where I want to go today, I want to look at sums of cubes. So what I'm going to do is draw a little multiplication table. I'll do the 4 by 4 one as well. But I'm not going to actually spell out the answers. It'd be 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, very exciting to watch, I'm sure. 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4. Now I'm going to add up all these answers. And in a typical mathematician's way, I'll do it in multiple ways and see what insights come out of it. First of all, I'll add up all the entries in the first row, and then I'll add up all the, all the answers to that. But I see this is all 1 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. This is 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. This is 3 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And this one is a common factor of 4. 4 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So the answer must be, if I add up all the entries in this little multiplication table, 1 lot of the sum times plus 2 lots of the sum plus 3 lots of the sum plus 4 lots of the sum. Let's take out a common factor of the sum. I get 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Lots of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So all the entries in this array actually sum to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 squared. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 squared. So that's my first answer. These 16 multiplication problems add up to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 squared. Now let's answer the problem in a second way and come up with a second answer, which must absolutely be the same because it's coming from the same grid of, squares, grid of um, values. Let's do L shapes. Let's do nomens. So I see, whoops, where's my pen gone? I see 1 times 1 plus these guys. Uh, they each have a common factor of 2. So I've got a 2 times a 1 plus a 2 plus a 1. And I s look at this nomen, this L shape. They all have a common factor of 3. And I see a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 plus a 2, whoops, plus a 1. And the final one, I see a common factor of 4. And I see leaving behind a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 plus a 4 plus a 3 plus a 2 plus a 1. But what is this? That's 1 times 1 plus 2 times, oh, all the numbers from 1 up to 2 back down again. That's actually 2 squared. Plus 3 times all the numbers from up to 3 and back down again. That's 3 squared. Plus 4 times numbers all the way up to 4 and back down again. That's 4 squared. I'm using what I just uh, uh, did about the diagonals. So, what have I got here? 1 times 1, if I like, I can put another 1 in there. The answer is really, second answer, whoops, is 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed plus 4 cubed. Well, the two answers are coming from the same grid. They must be equal. So I guess we've proven, whoops, the sum of the first 4 cubes is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 cubed squared. 
in general, I mean, I, sp I stuck the number 4 here, but I guess we've just established in general that 1 cubed plus 2 cubed all the way up to n cubed is actually 1 plus 2, oops, up to n squared. And if I use this formula up yonder, that is n times n plus 1 all over 2, if I factor it, squared. So there's the sum of the first n cubed numbers. Uh, there's a little curiosity here. Obviously, I've skipped over a couple of things. Do, do, do. Look what we got here. Um, P1. We've established that the sum of the first counting numbers is a half n squared plus a half n. P2. The sum of the first n square numbers. I haven't done in this video. I will do it in another video. P3 is the sum of the first n cubed numbers. And we've established it is the triangle number squared. If you'd expand it out, and I'm just going to save some time because I've already expanded out on a side piece of paper here, it's 1 to the 4th n to the 4th plus 1 half n cubed plus 1 fourth n squared. Uh, in another video, I will derive this formula. It turns out to be 1 third n cubed plus 1 half n squared plus 1 sixth of n. And then the good question is, can these formulas keep going? And the answer is yes. So here's my mystery. Notice that the sum of the first one-th powers is a polynomial in n squared. The sum of the second powers is a polynomial in n cubed. The sum of the polynomials of the third powers is a polynomial in n to the fourth. In fact, it's the, it's the sum of the first k power guaranteed to be a polynomial into the k plus one-th power. And look at the leading coefficient, one-half, one-quarter, one-third. Uh, what am I saying, one-fourth? I wonder if this is true. And another little mystery. Notice that the numbers, the fractional coefficients here, half plus half adds up to one. A third plus a half plus a sixth adds up to one. A fourth plus a half plus a fourth adds up to one. So whatever this polynomial is, we have these weird fractional coefficients, do they again add up to one? So there's a deep question, sums of powers, and what sort of amazing patterns and properties must they possess? It's not at all obvious each one should be a polynomial. It's not at all obvious it should be a polynomial in the next higher power. It's not at all obvious that the coefficients would have to 1. These are actually extraordinarily deep mysteries. But I've obviously I've skipped over the sum of squares. I need to do another video, and that will come. All right, thank you very much.